Hello students. So today we are going to discuss about the Norton's theorem and we will be doing the numericals based on this. So as we discussed already for Thevenin's theorem, when there is a complex network like this given, what you have to do is in the numerical, if you are given that this is the value of current that you need to calculate, then the very first thing that you should do is take out that load resistance through which the current is to be calculated. And while doing so, your these AB terminals will be open now. So the method to calculate RAB is same as that we discussed in our previous lecture of Thevenin's theorem, but still I will let you know about it again, that when you talk about RAB, when you look through these terminals A and B, that means when you pass the current through the A terminal, then you calculate your RAB. That means now the last branch after short circuiting your this voltage source, the last branch will start to get solved up first. So while doing so, your energy sources, as we discussed earlier also, your voltage source will get shorted while your current source will be taken as open circuited. So this is how you will be calculating your RAB that we are going to discuss in our next numerical also. So now how to calculate your short circuit current ISC. So in Thevenin, if you remember, we used to calculate the open circuit voltage from A to B, the resistance drops were calculated according to the polarity and that was VAB. But in this case, in Norton's theorem, the only difference here is that you short these two terminals A and B and then you calculate the total amount of current that pass through the terminals A and B. This current gives the value of your IN or ISC. So now we are going to do a short numerical to learn that how we calculate the ISC for different numericals. So this is our first numerical and if you just correlate it with the Thevenin's theorem question number one. So I have taken the same numerical so that you should know that whatever theorem we apply, the result will come same. The value of IL will be same. Either we apply Norton theorem or Thevenin theorem. So I have taken the same values of the resistances as well as the voltage source. So again, as we discussed earlier also, take out the 24 ohm resistor, draw the circuit again, by opening your AB terminals, take these two terminals as A and B. And as the very first thing that we are going to do is calculate our RAB. So I have short circuited the voltage source. Now for our RAB, you have to look through the terminals A and B. So that means the current will go from here. And as soon as it comes to your this node, it sees two different paths. And so these two paths come out to be in parallel. So the total resistance will be 2 into 12 divided by 14. So that is 24 by 14. So the next step is to calculate ISC. So for ISC, I'm going to put back my this 10 volts and I'm going to short my these two terminals A and B. So now the polarity of the current will be from the voltage source that is existing in the circuit. So now just see here, this is my 10 volt source. As soon as the current will come from this path towards this node, it is going to see two paths. One is of 12 ohm and the other is short circuit. You can just make it in a simplified form as just like this. So this is my total current IT that will be coming. So as soon as it will enter this node, it is going to see that there is a short circuited path across this 12 ohm resistor. So it is going to bypass it. And that means no current is going to flow through this thing. So now the value of ISC will only be 10 divided by two that makes it to be five ampere because now the total resistance is only two ohms because 12 ohm has been bypassed by this short circuit. No current will move here, right? So now we will be drawing our Norton circuit. So this is the value of our RAB and this is our ISC. We have brought back our 24 ohm resistor in the circuit of Norton's equivalent circuit. And now we need to find out the current IL 
through 24 ohm resistor so just to for a recap i have written the current division rule again so if this is the total current that is going to get divided into two parallel branches r1 and r2 then the value of this i1 will be equal to total current multiplied by the resistance of the opposite branch divided by a sum of the two resistances so the same thing i am going to apply here so total current this thing becomes equal to 5 amperes multiplied by opposite branch resistance is equal to 1.71 ohms and divided by 24 plus 1.71 so this makes it to be equal to 8.55 divided by 25.71 that is equal to 0.33 amperes and it is the same value of load current that we calculated in the thevenin's circuit theorem so this shows that whether you apply any of the theorems the result will always be the same so let's go on to our second numerical so now we move on to our question number 2 and here again we have to find the norton's equivalent circuit through the terminals a and b right so the very first thing we are going to do is find the value of rab for that i am going to replace my 20 volt and 10 volt sources with a short circuit and now i have to look through the terminals a and b so when it reaches the current reaches this node it is going to get divided into two parts so that makes our 10 and 5 in parallel so my rab will be equal to 10 in parallel with 5 that is equal to 50 by 15 10 plus 5 right so the next thing is we need to calculate the value of isc when i short my this a and b terminals and i have to calculate my current through this so if you just see here that it is 20 volt source is going to give the current in this direction and this 10 volt source is also going to give current in this direction because this branch is shorted so no current is going to pass from 20 volts towards this side of the circuit and no current is going to pass from this loop towards this loop because of this short circuit that is there so for our this loop that is my i1 will be equal to 20 divided by 10 and my i2 will only be equal to 10 divided by 5 so this makes it to be 2 amperes and this also makes it to be 2 amperes now just check the direction from this voltage source and this voltage source both are going from top to bottom so that means these two currents will be added to calculate our complete isc that is 2 plus 2 will make it to be 4 amperes so our complete norton's equivalent circuit will be these are my ab terminals this is my rab value and this is my 4 amperes so after calculating your rab it is coming out to be 3.33 ohms so this is my rab and this is my isc so now let's move on to our next numerical so now we come on to our third numerical in which we have to find the norton circuit so the very first thing that we need to calculate is again rab but now you have to pay attention to this source because this is not a voltage source now but it is a current source you can see this arrow that indicates that it is a current source so now we need to open our this for calculation of our rab so i am just opening these two terminals of the current source and i am redrawing my rest of the circuit so now we have to look through the terminals a and b so that means i am going to pass my current through these terminals now just see here as it comes to this node the current gets divided into these two nodes so that means my this branch of 5 ohms is in parallel with wherever my this current is going to flow now so this is my 4 the same current is going to flow here and it is going to pass through my 3 ohm resistor now when it is coming to my this node what it is going to find is here a 2 ohm resistor is there and here a open circuit is there open circuit means the resistance it is finding is infinite so will it go to over this 5 ohm resistor 
no it will not go to the 5 ohm resistor so that means we will discard this and that means my 4 is in series with 3 is in series with 2 and the whole of the circuit will be in parallel with the 5 ohm resistor and this makes my RAB. You can see once again when the current reaches over this node it is going to see two paths one is of 2 ohms while the other is of infinite resistance because 5 plus infinity is infinity only. So my current will not go through this because it cannot flow towards this terminal. So that means we are going to discard it and we are going to find out that this current, the same current is going to move towards the 2 ohm. So this makes my 4, 3 and 2 in series in parallel with 5 ohms. Right. So this gives me the total resistance of 3.21 ohms. So this comes out to be my RAB. Now we are going to find out the value of our ISC. So the next step we are going to calculate is our ISC. So now I am going to short my A and B terminals here. So as soon as I am going to short my these terminals, you have to always keep in mind, you should be very actively seeing the circuit that which branch is getting shorted on shorting the A and B terminals. So just put your arrow here before this node and just see that if the current will come here, it is going to find a 5 ohm branch and a 0 ohm branch. So that means my this 5 ohm branch will be shorted by my this A and B. So that means no current is going to pass through my this 5 ohm. And it is as good as my this A and B terminal here. So I can join my these terminals like this here. So this becomes my A and B terminals now. So this is the current I need to calculate. So if you just see here that the total current that is coming here is 25 amperes. And there are two branches now. One is of 2 ohm and the rest one is the series combination of 3 because same current moves here to 4 and same current moves to the ISC branch. So that means it is the series the parallel combination of the series combination of 4 and 3 then in parallel with your this 2 ohm. So that means I can draw it like this only. This is my 25 amperes. That is the total current. This is my 4 plus 3, that is 7 ohms. And this is my 2 ohms. So this is my A and B terminal. So that means I need to calculate the current here. So I'm directly going to put the formula of current division rule. So that makes it to be total current that is entering the circuit multiplied by the opposite branch resistance and divided by the sum of the two resistances. So this is going to give me the value of my this ISC. So this gives me the value of 5.5 amperes and here I have drawn the Norton circuit. This is my the value of ISC just that I just calculated and this is the value of my RAB that is coming across the terminals A and B. So now the next numerical is your homework. So now this is your homework. This is the same numerical as I gave you for the Thevenin's circuit. So you have to find the current again in your AB branch using your Norton's theorem. And the answer will be same as that you have got for your Thevenin's theorem. So that means this numerical you have to do by both the theorem Thevenin as well as Norton and you have you can cross check your result by having the value of IL same as that for Thevenin as you will get for Norton's theorem. So if you have any doubt, just leave your message and I'm going to solve this numerical for both Norton as well as Thevenin in my next lecture. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.